inside the real USA secret space program. Let's remember that we have a, well, supposedly in three days, June 25th is a date that the uh, UFO disclosure report will be going to Congress, but let's see if that will be coming out. Is there a secret space program for the United States and have clandestine groups been reverse engineering ET technology? Dr. David Clark is an investigative journalist, reader, and lecturer at Sheffield Hallam University in England. He was also the curator for the National Archives UFO Project from 2008 to 13 and regularly comments on, in national and international media on UFOs. These documents reveal how the RAF expressed great interest in finding UFOs, not only the RAF, RAF but also, of course, U.S., Canada, Russia, China, France, Italy, Greece, Mexico, Puerto Rico. Uh, we know that every country in the world has had UFO sightings and encounters. Dr. Clark told the Daily Mail, even though they have been partly censored, they cannot conceal the fact the UK military were interested in capturing UFO technology or what they coyly referred to as novel weapon technology, and the files reveal they were desperate to capture this technology wherever it came, wherever it came from before the Russians or the Chinese got hold of it first. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. So we can understand it was a race for extraterrestrial and UFO technology because this meant that whichever country was able to back engineer, reverse engineer it, would have the reign of space. So although it was in 1997, Russia was still regarded as an undefeated enemy with a weapons program regarded as a threat to the West. The question is, did they get one? More on that later. The military personnel who are encountering these phenomena tell remarkable stories. In one example, over the course of two weeks in November 2004, the USS Princeton, a guided missile cruiser operating advanced naval radar, repeatedly detected unidentified aircraft operating in and around the USS Nimitz carrier battle group, which it was guarding, uh, guarding off the coast of San Diego. This was back in 2004, the Tic Tac UFO, as we know. In some cases, according to incident reports and interviews with military personnel, these vehicles descended from altitudes higher than 60,000 feet at supersonic speeds, that is, as fast as a shooting star, only to suddenly stop and hover as low as 50 feet above the surface of the ocean. Christopher Mellon, former Assistant Secretary of Defense, states, We don't know the answer to these questions, but we do know that the United States has a history of government agencies existing in secrecy for years. The National Security Agency, the NSA, was founded in 1952, and its existence was hidden until the mid-1960s. Even more secretive is the National Reconnaissance Office, which was founded in 1960, but remained a secret for 30 years. We're talking about Special Access Programs, SAP. From these, we have acknowledged and waived SAPs. These programs do not exist publicly, but they do indeed exist. They're better known as Deep Black Programs. In 1997, U.S. Senate report described them as, quote, so sensitive that they are exempt from standard reporting requirements to the Congress, end quote. We also know that there is a black budget to fund these programs. And there's a discussion on the video here in the link, a great discussion with uh, Richard Dolan, titled Secret Space Program, Real Evidence. Now, are these objects extraterrestrial? There are literally hundreds of people with extensive academic, political, and military backgrounds, all the way to astronauts, who have been blowing the whistle for a very long time. 
Many specific scientific publications have also been made throughout the years describing strange and radar confirmed military sightings by military pilots. And you can see some evidence and documentation from the article on uh, the Chilean Air Force. Now, according to Herman Oberth, one of the founding fathers of rocketry, that's at the time of Werner von, von Braun, rocketry and astronautics, he said, flying saucers are real and they are spaceships from another solar system. I think that they possibly are manned by intelligence, intelligence observers who are members of a race that may have been investigating our Earth for centuries, end quote. Herman Oberth, in his book, Flying Saucers Come from a Distant World, in American Weekly, October 24th, 1954. Victor Marchetti said, we have indeed been contacted, perhaps even visited, by extraterrestrial beings and the U.S. government in collusion with the other national powers of the Earth is determined to keep this information from the general public. This is what Victor Marchetti, uh, Second Look, Volume 1, Number 7, Washington, D.C., May 1979, said. Another great quote. There are objects in our atmosphere which are technically miles in advance of anything we can deploy. We have no means of stopping them from coming here. There is a serious possibility that we are being visited and have been visited for many years by people from outer space, from other civilizations. This should be the subject of rigorous scientific investigation and not the subject of rubbish by tabloid newspapers. This was uh, a quote by Lord Admiral Hill Norton, former Chief of Defense Staff, five-star Admiral of the Royal Navy, Chairman of the NATO Military Committee. The point is, if you believe some of these objects are indeed extraterrestrial, you are not alone. Couple these statements with the claims of thousands of individuals who have had contactee and abduction experiences, who shared remarkable consistent stories, and it's definitely a plausible hypothesis for the UFO phenomenon. The takeaway, what are the implications of extraterrestrial contact? Humanity will always go through paradigm shifting realizations that will jolt human consciousness. Right now, we have a lot of work to do here on Earth, and we should be focusing on cleaning up our planet, ridding it of greed, destruction, war, etc. I feel that the ET reality is somehow connected to that realization and the need and urgency may, uh, that many of us feel regarding the planet and service to others. This is, was expert excerpt from Collective Evolution. It's on Humans Are Free by Alexander Light. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Now, just in my conclusion here, my comment is that there are archaeologists and anthropologists that believe, paleontologists anyway, that believe that the sightings of these very advanced technologies that we see, these crafts, could be the remnants of the quote-unquote Atlantean civilization. The, they had such very advanced technology. They had space flight. They had space uh, craft. They also were able to disappear uh, within a split second because they had interdimensional um, uh, travel. In fact, the Emerald Tablets written by Thoth the Atlantean says that they were abusing their te technology so much that he believed it was a matter of time before divine intervention would put an end to the Atlanteans and Atlantis. And that's exactly what happened. But he states that Many Atlanteans did escape the destruction of Atlantis and they had gone to other parts of the world and again set up their cities. The first things they set up were, for some reason, he didn't, I can't remember why, why but they constructed pyramids. Perhaps it was for their uh, underground cities and also for their power generators, I don't know. But uh, these archaeologists and anthropologists believe that a lot of these remnant uh, sightings that we have could be the leftover Atlanteans who for the most part are still hiding from humanity and it could be their craft that we're seeing. So it's not uh, extraterrestrial but it could be for example ancestral craft, ancestral technology. 
Now, we don't know whether the Atlanteans themselves were originally extraterrestrial. We have no idea. Anyway, that's just one theory. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.